Hey everyone, in this video we are going to be using the globally scoped pagination variable provided by the blog plugin client API to access and display pagination data on the index post layout component. Alright, so to do that we're going to come over here to the index post layout post and I'm just going to zoom in right here. So like I said, this is what we're going to be doing. So we're now ready to begin the development of the index post layout component. And we'll be using that globally scoped pagination variable provided by the blog plugin client API to access the pagination data. And in this tutorial, we'll be focusing on the post title and preview pagination data to display the data on the pagination pages. We'll be updating the index post layout components template tag. All right, so we're going to start off by naming the component in our index post layout component there. And then we're gonna be going over how to loop over the pagination pages. Then we're gonna look at how to add post titles. And then we're gonna take a look at how to add post previews. And then we're gonna get into index post styling. And then we're gonna take a look at how to add a heading to the index post layout component. All right, so that's what we're going to be doing. Now you want to make sure that you start the local development server, which should be running at localhost port 8080 to see the changes that we'll be making to the site. And if the changes aren't appearing after you save them, then try restarting your local development server. So over here you can see, and let me just refresh. So you can see I have the local development server running right here and I'm on the index post layout component. So let me go to the home component here and you can see that I have it running on localhost port 8080 right down here running in this terminal and now you want to be sure to add each block of code below one at a time to your project and then you can view the changes in the browser to get a better understanding of what each block is responsible for and you can view all the code in this tutorial by going to the tutorial 17 branch of the code monkeys block tutorials repository so you can come right here and you can get all of the code that we'll be using in this tutorial all right so Let's start with naming the component. Now, before accessing and displaying the pagination data, we're going to first give the component a name and remove the created lifecycle hook, which we were using in the previous tutorial to log the pagination data to the console. All right, so if we come over here, you can see we have this created hook right here that we were using in the previous tutorial. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove that. And then what we wanna do is we just want to add this code right here. So we're just gonna do export default and then I'm going to type name and I already have the export default. Don't need that. My bad. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do name and then we're going to do index post and then we'll just format and then we'll save the file. All right. So, and this is going to be the index, the updated index post view file. So we just added this name right here of index post to the layout component. So let's just come over here to our local host and we want to go to the all post right here to view the index post layout component. All right. So now that we've done that, we want to get into looping over the pagination pages. All right. So to display the pagination data, we're going to loop over the pagination.pages property, which if you remember from the previous tutorial, if you press tutorial 16 pagination, this pagination.pages is an array of objects where each object contains data related to post pages that are accessible on the current pagination page. All right, now, now let's talk about using the v4 directive. Now, since pagination.pages is an array that we want to loop over, we're going to use the v4 directive to render a list of post pages based on the data within the array. So the v4 directive uses the following syntax. So you could have this v4 and then you set it equal to this item in items or items is the array you want to loop over and item is an alias for the array element being iterated on. So here items corresponds to pagination.pages for us and we'll use post as the alias for the array element being iterated on. This means our v4 directive is gonna look like this. We're gonna have this v4 and we're gonna set this equal to post in pagination.pages. So this is what we're gonna be using to loop over each post page in that pagination.pages um, array that we have. Now, 
let's talk about using the key attribute. So when using the v4 directive, the common best practice is to bind a key attribute where each value given to the key attribute should be unique. So the key attribute uses the following syntax. So you want to bind this key right here. That's what this colon does is this binds this key value. And we're going to set that equal to this item.id here where id is the property with a unique value for every item in the items array. So you really only need to use the key attribute when the rendered list relies on child component state or temporary document object model or DOM state. For example, if you had a form with input values. So this means we don't actually need to include the key attribute since we're currently just rendering a static list. So our list is just going to be static. It's not relying on any child component state or temporary DOM state. So we don't actually need to add the key attribute. However, we're going to bind the key attribute in case we ever need to use it in the future. And to ensure the key attribute has a unique value for each item in the list, we're going to use the key property, which is a unique value generated for each page object within the pagination.pages array. And if you remember from the previous tutorial we saw, we went over that key property. And then here's what the key attribute will look like in our case. So we're gonna bind this key value and we're gonna set it equal to post.key, which this key right here is a property that exists on each page object within that pagination.pages array. All right, so now we need to determine a tag that we're gonna attach the v4 directive to and that we're gonna bind that key attribute to. So we're going to add them to a div tag, which will allow us to wrap the pagination data for each post in the list of post pages. So here's what the div tag is going to look like after adding the v4 directive and key attribute. So we're gonna have this div tag and we're gonna have this v4, which we set equal to this post in pagination.pages. And then we're gonna bind this key value and set that equal to post.key. All right, so now that we have, we've determined the tag and we've determined how we're gonna loop over the items and we've set our key attribute. Now we're gonna use a root element. So since the div tag uses the v4 directive, it's going to render multiple elements. So this means we cannot use it as the root element, i.e. the first element in the template tag, because the template tag can only have one root element. So to resolve this issue, we're going to wrap the div tag that's using the v4 directive within another div tag, which will serve as the root element. So this is what the index.view file should now look like. So after updating it, so if we come over here, what we want to do is we just want to add this code up in the template tag. So we're going to add this outer div, which is going to serve as the root element. So we'll add our outer div right here. And then what we want to do is we want to add our div tag right here. And we're going to use this div tag. This is the div tag we're going to be attaching our v4 directive to. And we're going to set that equal to the post in pagination.pages. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to bind our key attribute. So if we come over here, you can see we have our key attribute right here. And we are going to bind that. And then we're going to set that equal to post.key. All right. So format the file. Then we'll save it. So that's what we have right over here. And this is going to let us loop over the pagination data. All right. So if you have any questions or you want to learn more about the v4 directive and the key attribute, then you can check out these resources right here. So we have one on list rendering and view, maintaining state and view. It talks about the key attribute the key attribute in view and then we've also have this youtube video right here which would be helpful for understanding the key attribute and then we have this blog post right here on understanding the key attribute so if you have any questions about that you can check out these links right here all right so now let's take a look at the entry page html so so if you so after updating the index.post.view file with the code above, if you navigate to the entry page, so that would be localhost 48080 slash posts, you won't see any changes on the page. And this is because we've rendered div tags without any of the pagination data inside of them. So if you come over here, 
you can see that there's nothing happening on the page just yet and that's because we just have we just have these div tags right here we haven't displayed any content inside of them we're just using these div tags which are going to act as containers for our pagination data so we so you won't be seeing anything but if you navigate to the entry page inspect the browser and go to the elements tab the html for the body tag should now look like this so we have that div so we have our body tag that div tag with an id of app div tag with an id of global layout and then you can see that we have our root div tag right here and then we have our other two div tags right here so if we come over here we don't want to view the page source but if we come over here we inspect the page we go to the elements tab inside of the body inside of that div tag with an id of app inside of the div tag with an id of global layout then you can see we have this div tag right here and this corresponds to this div tag over here which is that root div tag and then we have these two div tags right here and this is they're being made by this div tag right here that has that v4 directive on it and this is because our pagination.pages object on our entry page that has two pages inside of it and that's based off of what we configured in the config file for the blog plugin in terms of how many pages we wanted to display per per pagination page so that's how we have these two right here these two div tags so if you come back over here so notice again how the entry page consists of two div tags wrapped inside of the div tag that's being used as the root element of the template tag and each of those div tags inside of the parent div tag corresponds to a post page that is accessible on the entry page okay so now let's go to the page two html so if you navigate to the second page so that would be this page right here so if we navigated to this page you also won't notice any changes on the page and again this is because we've rendered these div tags without any pagination data inside of them they're just acting as containers again for us and this is because we've rendered a div tag without any of the pagination data inside of it so the html for the body tag for the second page should now look something like this so again we have our body tag div tag with an id of app div tag with an id of global layout and then we have this the root div tag right here and then the div tag for our post page on the second page so if you come over here if you inspect the browser if you were to go to the body tag div tag with an id of app div tag with an id of global layout and then you go to this div tag right here which corresponds to this root div tag again then you can see that we have this div tag right here which is created by this v4 directive that's looping over the pagination.pages array right here and you can see we only have one div tag because we only have one post page that's accessible on the second pagination page all right so again notice how the second page consists of one div tag wrapped inside of the div tag that's being used as the root element of the template tag and there's only one div tag again because we only have one post page accessible on the second page all right so now let's get into our post title so before we can access the post title data using the pagination.pages property we need to first add titles to the post files we created in the post directory so that's these files right here our example page one file example page two file and example page three file so now we'll get into adding titles to the post files so since the post files are markdown files we can add titles to the files by adding a heading level one so for example that would look like this with this number sign right here and then heading level one to each file which gets converted to the file in html to be an h1 tag with the content being heading level one there so here's what the post files look like after adding the titles so if we come over here what we want to do is we just want to open up the the post file so if you come over here we'll go to the example page one and we just want to add in this example post one as the heading and then we'll save that file and then we'll go to the second one and we'll just type in example let me put in that there first example post two and we'll save that file and then if you come over here what we want to do is we just want to type in example post three all right so now we've set titles for each page each post page in our post directory we've set all of these titles right here 
And if you have any questions or you want to learn more about markdown headings, then you can check out the basic syntax guide right here. And this talks about the different heading levels that you can use in markdown. All right, so now let's talk about adding titles to page variables. So when ViewPress encounters a heading level one in a markdown file, so that would be this right here, it automatically adds a title property to the globally scoped page variable. All right, so the page objects in the pagination.pages property are the same as the page variables used by the post pages. So this post page right here and each post page, so for example, page one, two, and three, they're each gonna have that globally scoped page variable that describes them. And ViewPress adds this title property right here by looking at the markdown file, seeing that you have that heading level one, and then it adds this heading level one as a title property to that page variable. And then the pagination.pages property uses the page variables that are present on each example page here. So that means that the page object in the pagination.pages in the pagination array here, each page object will now have a title property that we can access in the index post layout component. And you can take a look at the global computed documentation to learn more about the page variable and other globally scoped variables. So you can come here to learn more about some globally scoped variables available in ViewPress. All right, so now let's get into displaying the post titles. So now that we can access the post titles in the pagination.pages property, we're ready to render the post titles on the pagination pages. Okay, so we're going to display the post titles as H2 tags. So if we come over here, let's open up our index post.view file. And I'm just going to close out that terminal down there, give us a little bit more room. So we're going to display the post titles as H2 tags, which we'll be wrapping inside of two div tags. So if we come over here, what we want to do is we want to add our two div tags that we're going to be wrapping our, our H2 tag in. So we'll just be adding our two div tags right here. And then we'll be adding our h2 tag right here. And let me just add the h2 tag. Okay. So now we have our h2 tag and our div tag. Now we're going to be using these div tags right up here to add styling to the list of post pages in a future tutorial. So right now they're just acting as just containers around our h2 tag right there. So we're just going to format the file and save that. And to display the post titles, we'll be using text interpolation. So you can come here to learn more about that. And what this allows us to use variables inside of HTML tags by using the mustache syntax. So the mustache syntax consists of wrapping a variable inside of double curly braces. So we can access the title property on each page object in our loop by using the post.title. So, and then we can then display this by using the text interpolation described above. So here is our text interpolation that we're gonna be using. So that's this double curly braces right there. That's that mustache syntax, which right here we're using the text interpolation to display this variable in the HTML. And then we're gonna access the item that we're iterating over, which is this post right here. So that's what we're gonna be iterating over in each iteration of this loop right here. We have access to this post variable right there. And then we're gonna be accessing that title property that was set by ViewPress by looking in those example pages, those, those markdown files and those titles that we set using that heading level one in the markdown files and then ViewPress adds that that title property to the post to the post pages, and then our pagination.pages variable. Then we're going to be looping over that, which contains each of those page objects. All right, so let's format the file and then save it. And then the index post.view file should now look like this. We have our div tags that we're wrapping our H2 tag in that we're going to be adding styling to later. Then we have our h2 tag, and then we're using that text interpolation to use that post.title variable. All right. So if we, so after updating the index post.view file with the code above, if you navigate to the entry page, so if we navigated to this page right here, and 
let me see. Maybe if I restart the local development server. There you go. Okay, so now you can see that we have our example post one title and our example post two title. Okay, so and so we should see those post those post titles being displayed with some styling provided by the default theme. So we have those underlines being provided by the default theme there. Now the HTML for the body tag for the entry page should now look something like this. So we have our our div tags right here that we're wrapping each post page in. So that's these div tags right here that we're wrapping each h2 tag in and then this outer div tag corresponds to this div tag that we're looping over and then we just have that div tag of the root element right there then we have our h2 tag for example post one and example post two so if you were to come over here and inspect the browser go to the body tag and if you went to the div tag id of app div tag with an id of global layout and then you can see we have that root div tag right there and then we have our two div tags provided by the v4 directive so that we're looping over it creates these div tags for us and then inside of each one of those we're going to have our div tags that we're wrapping our h2 tag in and then you can see this title that we set for example page one we have right there with the example post one and then down here this is our other div tag that we have that's created by the v4 directive and then inside of there we have our div tags that we're wrapping the h2 tag in with example post two so that's what the HTML is now going to look like for us on the entry page. And now let's talk about the page two HTML. So if you navigate to the second page right here, you should now see one post title being displayed with some styling, which is again provided by the default theme. So if we come over here to the second page, you can see that we have example post three. And if we inspect, go to the body tag, div tag, ID of app, div tag with an ID of global, then you can see that we have our root div tag right here. And then we have our div tag that's created by the v4 directive and then inside of there we have our div tags which we're using to wrap our h2 tag which uses that post title of example post 3 which is the post that's accessible on the second page in our list of pagination pages here All right so that's what the body tag for the second page should now look like and now let's get into post previews all right so let's go up here figure out where this previews is there we go okay so the post preview data is a snippet of text taken from the beginning of a post which is used as an introduction to the post in the list of post pages so before we can access the post preview data using the pagination.pages property we need to first add previews to the post files we created in the post directory. So that's again the example page one markdown file, the example page two markdown file, and the example page three markdown file. So this is how we'll be adding previews to the post files. So since the post files are markdown files, we can use YAML front matter blocks in the files to and define a custom variable preview. So let's go to our example page one right here, and we're going to add our YAML front matter block, which we do by adding these triple dashed lines. And then we're going to set our custom variable of preview. And then we're going to give it a value of example post one preview. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to add this to the rest of the post pages right here. So we'll come over here to the example post two. And I'm just going to copy in this code right there. I'll just paste that in. And then we'll come over here to the example page three. And we'll just copy this preview for that. Okay. And then we will just save that. And let's just double check this one. Yep. Okay. So so here's what the post files should look like after adding a preview variable. So we have the preview, for example, page one inside of our YAML front matter block right here, this preview variable that we set, and we give it this value here of example post one preview. And then we do 
similar thing for example page two and example page three. Now if you have any questions or you want to learn more about YAML, front matter blocks, and ViewPress, then you can check out these resources. So this previous blog post where we talked about YAML front matter blocks in ViewPress, and we also have the front matter documentation and the glossary right here that describes the front matter property. Okay. So another thing to note here is that the number of characters used in the preview. So the value for each post preview variable should be within a preferred minimum and maximum number of characters. And this will ensure the post previews in the list of post pages looks consistent. So you just kind of, you want to keep your, your previews looking consistent in the list of post pages. So you would just kind of think of a minimum and maximum number of characters that you thinks that you would think looks good in your list of post pages and then you would try to keep your preview within that minimum and maximum number of characters. All right, so adding previews to the page variable. So when ViewPress encounters a YAML front matter block in a markdown file, it automatically adds each variable as a property to the globally scoped page.frontmatter variable. Okay, so again, each one of these markdown files over here, each one of these gets a globally scoped page variable. And then when ViewPress sees that YAML front matter block, it adds the front matter property to that page variable. All right, so the page objects in the pagination.pages property are again, the same as the page variables used by the pad by the post pages, which means each page object will now have a front matter dot preview property that we can access in the index post layout component. So again, you can take a look at the global computed documentation to learn more about the page variable and other globally scoped variables. Now, a quick little note here before we get on to displaying the post previews is that we have Instead of defining the custom variable preview in the YAML front matter blocks of markdown files, ViewPress provides the ability to use a content excerpt by adding a more comment to a markdown file. And then any content above the comment gets extracted and exposed as a globally scoped page.excerpt variable. And then this variable can then be used to render the list of post pages with excerpts for each post, just like our custom variable preview. But I prefer to use the custom variable preview because the more comment takes all of the content above it, which includes any HTML as opposed to just using the text of a post. So when you go to write a post, if you have any HTML that you're using inside of your post right here inside of your post file, the more comments going to take that HTML and actually display the HTML and not just the text inside of it in your post preview. So I just prefer to use this preview variable up here in the YAML front matter block and to just set it up there as opposed to using this more comment. But if you're interested in using the content excerpt, then you can come to the documentation right here, which will describe it for you. All right, so now let's get on to displaying post previews. So now that we can access the post previews in the pagination.pages property, we're now ready to render the post previews on the pagination pages. So let's come over here to our index post.view file right here. So what we want to do here is we want to, we're going to display the post previews as P tags, which will place underneath the parent div tag of the H2 tag. So this is the parent div tag of the H2 tag right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down here and we're just going to add a P tag right down here, right underneath of that. And this P tag is where we're going to be adding our post preview. So to display the post previews, we're going to be using that text interpolation again, just like we did when displaying the post title. So to do that, we're going to be using that mustache syntax. And then we're going to be adding our variable inside of there and we can access the preview property on each page object in our loop by using the post. So this is the item that we're looping over in the pagination.pages property right here, this post. So, and then each one of those, those posts, we're going to have access to the front matter property, and then that's going to have a preview property on it. So again, when view, looks at those markdown files, it's going to see that YAML front matter block, it's going to see that we set a preview variable inside of that front matter block. And then it's going to take that and it's going to add that to the front matter object on the page object for us on that globally scoped page variable. 
it's going to add this front matter property onto it, which is then going to have access to this preview property that we set in the YAML front matter block. And then when we loop over our pagination.pages, we have access to each one of those page objects that ViewPress created for us for each one of those, those markdown files that we have. All right, so we're just going to save that. So format the file and then we'll save it. All right, so this is what the index.view file is going to look like. And now let's go to the entry page HTML. So after updating the index.view file with the code above, if you navigate to the entry page, so if we go to the entry page right here, so you can now see that we have our, our post previews being displayed right here. Okay. So that, so we now have the post previews being displayed with some styling again, that's provided by the default theme. So that's these underlines right here. All right. So the HTML for the body tag should now look something like this. So we have, and if you take a look over here, you may notice that we have example post one as the title and example post one preview is the title over here. And over here we have example post two and example post three. Um, this is because the blog plugin actually uses a date variable in the YAML front matter block on each page to determine the order of these. So we don't have that. So if you want these to remain consistent, then you need to set the date variable in the YAML front matter block, which we'll be doing in a future tutorial. Now, if we come over here and if I run this again, then we might just to be consistent. Yeah, so now we're just gonna be consistent with just what we have in the examples over there. All right, so if we go to the entry page HTML, and if we inspect the page right here, and then if we go to the body tag, and I'll just make this a little bit bigger, inside of the div tag, ID of app, div tag with an ID of global layout, our root div tag, and then our two div tags, provided by the v4 directive when we're looping over pagination.pages. And then we have our div tags right here. So we have our div tag that's wrapping our p tag, and then the div tag inside of here with that h2 tag with that example post one. And then we have our p tag right here with that example post one preview. And then if you come down here to our other div tag, you can see that we have our example post two heading, and then we have our p tag with that example post two preview right there. All right. So that's the entry page. And now let's go to the page two HTML. So if you navigate to the second page, you should now see one post preview being displayed with some styling, which is again provided by the default theme. So the HTML for the body tag for the second page is now gonna look something like this. So if you come over here to the second page, you'd see that here's our example post three preview being displayed. And if we inspect the page, we go to the body tag, div tag, ID of app, div tag, idea global layout and then we have our root div tag then we have the div tag provided by the v4 directive and then we have our div tag which we're using to wrap everything our div tag which wraps this h2 title right here of example post 3 and then we have our p tag that we set for the post preview which is example post 3 pre preview as the content right there all right so that's the page 2 html and now let's talk about some index post styling. So when viewing the pagination pages, you probably noticed the list of post pages stretches across the entire width of the page. So you can see right here that this just stretches across the entire width of the page. So it doesn't look too good. So the styling doesn't look too good. So we're going to update the styling by adding the following class, this theme default content to the outermost div tag. So this is how we're gonna add the theme default content. So the index post.view file is now gonna look something like this so if we come down here we just want to add this class right up here to this root div tag so we're going to give it a class and we're going to set this equal to theme default content and we're going to save that and now if you come here you can see it looks a lot better so so if you were to come over here you can see that the page is now styled and instead of stretching across the entire width of the screen it's kind of it's more centered in the middle of the screen and that's what it's going to look like for the second page and then if we come over here to the entry page here this is what it's going to look like on the entry page all right so that 
is adding the theme default content class. So this is the theme default content style. So this theme default content class is provided by the default theme and it provides these styles right here. So it's gonna give us this theme default content selector right here and this selector right here with this not custom right there. So this is saying that we want this theme default content class. So when we see this class and it doesn't have this class of custom on there, we'll talk about that a little bit more below. Let me just have this max width right here of 740 pixels, a margin of zero auto, this padding right here. And then we have these media queries right here, which for the max width of 959 pixels, we're gonna be applying this class right here, which we're just updating the padding. Then we have this media query right here with the max width of 419 pixels. And we're gonna be selecting this class right here. And then we're just again gonna be updating the padding right there. So this theme default content, not custom, this is used to select tags that have a class of theme default content and that don't have a class of custom by using the not pseudo class. So this selector is defined by the default theme since other pages can use the theme default content class along with a class of custom to apply different styles than the ones shown here. So the home page is an example of a page that uses the theme default content class along with a class of custom to apply different styles. So if you were to come over here and go to the home page. And if you inspected this right here, and if we went inside of the home page and then we went to this main tag right here, then you could see that we have this theme default content class right here with this custom class as well. So that's so when it has this custom class, it's going to apply this styling right down here. So that's that's what ViewPress is doing behind the scenes for us when it runs in this theme default content with this custom class it's applying this styling right here so when we go to our pagination pages right here our index post style our index post layout component right here what we're going to do is we're going to have this theme default content class being added to this root div tag for us and what this is doing is it's adding these styles right down here so it's going to look and it's going to say, okay, I have this theme default content class and it doesn't have this custom class on it. So I'm going to add these styles right here, this max width, this margin, and then this padding right here. And then if you were to come and inspect the page, and let's go to 959 pixels. And then you can see that we have this on the theme default content class. When it doesn't have that class of custom, it gets added. This padding gets added. And that's defined by the media query, this max width media query right there. And then we have it for 419 pixels. And then you can see that we get this media query with the max width of 419 pixels. And this is selecting that theme default content class that doesn't have the class of custom. And that adds this padding right here for us. So that's all being provided by ViewPress for us. So so that's the theme default content class right there. So this max width of 740 pixels. So this sets the maximum width of the div tag to be 740 pixels. So if the content is greater than the max width, then the height of the div tag will automatically be changed. And if the content is smaller than the max width, then the max width property has no effect. All right, so that's what the max width property does. So you can come here and you can see that the max width just sets the max width of our list of post pages right here to be 740 pixels for us. So that way it doesn't stretch across the entire screen. And then we have this margin zero of auto. So this sets the margin for the div tag by setting the top and bottom margins to be zero and the left and right margins to a value of auto. And the value of auto means the browser will automatically set the left and right margins to horizontally center the div tag for us. So if we were to take off this margin right here, this margin zero auto, you could see that it just gets pushed over to the left side. So what this does is it sets the top and bottom margin to be zero around our list of post pages here. And that auto is what's going to horizontally center the list of post pages for us. So that again is going to set that left and right margin. The browser is going to set that. So then our content is then going to be centered on the page. And then just this max width right here, if you didn't have that set, then it's going to stretch across the entire page there. And then we have this padding, this 2 rem, 2.5 rem. This sets the padding for the div tag by setting the top and bottom paddings to 2 rem and the left and right paddings to 2.5 rem. So if we were to take off this padding right here, then 
and if we took off this max width then you can kind of see like the padding being added there around the top and the bottom for us so that's what the padding property is doing for us there and now we have this at media max width 959 pixels so this is going to apply the styles within it when the maximum width of the display area for example the browser window is less than or equal to the provided value which in this case is 959 pixels so if you were to come over here and if we just went to 959 pixels you could see that we have this media query right here with that max width of 959 pixels like we saw and so now we're going to have this padding of two rem so this sets the padding for all sides of the diff tag to be two rem when the width of the display area is less than or equal to 959 pixels so you can see here that we're now using this padding instead of this padding right here and you can see that we have this padding right here and you can kind of see this padding being used there so that's what that padding is doing for us there and then we have the media query the max width of 419 pixels and that's going to apply the styles within it when the maximum width of the display area is less than or equal to the provided value which in this case is 419 pixels so if we come over here and if we go to 419 pixels then you can see that we have this media query right here that's being applied and inside of there we have this padding of 1.5 rem so this sets the padding for all sides of the div tag to be 1.5 rem when the width of the display area is less than or equal to 419 pixels so we're now applying this padding right there so you can see the effect that it has there it overrides this padding right down there and then it's going to override that padding as well so that is what the padding is going to look like when we have a max width of 419 pixels all right so those are all the styles that the theme default content class provides for us all right so if you have any questions about the css discussed above then you could check out these resources css tutorial just a general css resource there we have one for the not pseudo class if you're interested in that css max width property and then when does margin zero auto center so this will give you a better idea of what that margin zero auto is is doing and then we have the css at media rule right there and then to view the styles in the browsers like we did you can navigate to that entry page or to the second page inspect the browser go to the elements tab like we did locate the div tag with that theme default content class and then go to the styles tab the styles tab there so like we so the theme default content class, quick note here, is used on the global content component within the page and home components provided by the default theme. So if you look at the HTML on the home page like we did, you'll see the theme default content class being used on a div tag with the main tag with the class of home. So we saw that over here we had the inside of here we have that main tag and then we have that div tag right there with that theme default content class and then that class of custom right there so so you can see that theme default content class being used on that div tag within the main tag with the class of home there we'll be discussing the global content component the page component and the home component in more detail in future tutorials so we'll be discussing all of these components later on and that's just kind of how viewpress is using this theme default content class on different components for us. All right, so now let's get into the index post heading. So we're now going to add a heading to the pagination pages. So this heading will be displayed on each pagination page. So this is how we're gonna display the heading. So we're going to display the heading as an H1 tag, which we'll be adding as the first child of the outermost div tag. So if you come over here to the index post file, and then let's come down here to our displaying the heading. So we want to add it as the first child of the outermost div tag. So if we come over here, we're just going to type in h1. And this is our h1 tag. And then we're just going to add this tiding, this title right here, which is going to be the scribblings of a monkey. And then we'll just format the file, save it. And this is what our h1 tag, our heading tag is going to be for each pagination page in our list. Of pagination pages so this is what the index post.view file is now going to look like we've added that h1 tag there and after updating 
the indexpost.view file with the code above. If we navigate to the entry page, you should now see the heading being displayed with some default styling provided by the default theme. So if you come over here, if we go to all post, okay, so now you can see that we have our heading right there on our entry page. And then this is the HTML for the body tag for the entry page should now look something like this. So this is the HTML for the body tag of the entry page. So if we inspect like we've already done over here, you can see that we have our root tag right there with that class of theme default content. And then we have our H1 tag right there as the heading for our pagination page right here. And then you can see that we have some, some styling right down here that's being provided by the default theme as well on that H1 tag right there. And if we go now, if we go to the second page, so the page two HTML, if we navigate to the second page, you should now see the heading being displayed with some styling, which is again provided by the default theme. And this is what the HTML for the body tag for the second page should now look like. So if you were to come over here and if we went to the second page, so we went to page two right here, you can see that we have the title right here. This heading of the pagination page is the same one as the entry page. And it's inside of that root div tag right there from our file with the class of theme default content. And it has that H1 tag right there. And you can see again that we have these styles that are being provided by the default theme right down here that are being applied to it. All right, so that's the page two HTML. And all right, so in this video, we went over a bunch of stuff. So we went in and we named our index post. We gave a name to the index post layout component right here, which we did down there. We looped over the pagination pages using the V4 directive right here. And then we looped over the pagination.pages property. And this post right here is an alias for each item that we're iterating over in our loop here. And then we added, we're using this key attribute right here, using that, that key property that's available on each page object in view, which is a unique value. And then we binded that key value. And then we determined what tag we wanted to use. So we had this div tag right here that we wanted to use our V4 directive and our key attribute on and then we added this root element up here to the template tag and then we added our our loop right here we looked at the entry page html the page two html then we went over the different post titles right here adding the title of the post adding the titles to the page variables displaying the toast the post titles right here so we have this post title right here inside of these div tags and then inside of this h2 tag using that text interpolation we went over those entry page html page and then we looked at the post preview right here using that p tag and then using that the text interpolation right here and then accessing it with that post.frontmatter.preview right there so we added those previews to the post files and then we went over how those previews get added to the page variables and then the display again over here we went over the entry page, the page two HTML, and then we did some styling on there by adding this class right up here to our, our root div tag up there. And then we went over the, the styles provided by the theme, the theme default content class. And then we talked about the index post heading and we added that right up here using this H1 tag. And then we went over the entry page and the page two HTML for that. All right, so that's what we did in this video. And in the next tutorial, we'll be continuing the development of the index post layout component by using the pagination variable to add images to each post in the list of post pages. All right, so we'll see you in the next video.